Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. This is part of a bigger series, um, which is a platformer. So I'm hoping to get this done in fewer than 10 videos, but let's see how it goes. So in this video, we're going to create a, maybe this video and a subsequent one, we're going to create a simple character selection screen. So I'm going to click on start game here and you're presented with three characters. And as you select the character, you can see the character will appear at the scene and that'll be the character that you play with. So you can see you can select a variety of different characters here. All right. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna go up to the top here, start off with a fresh scene. And this is gonna be a lit 2D URP. I'm gonna go ahead and create here. Now, something else I want you to notice is I took our letter drop game that I created in the previous tutorial and I just dropped all those files in here. And then I made another folder called platformer and I created some folders, underscore scripts, art, and scenes in here. Now, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm going to do my best by creating a, um, I'm going to make another folder and then we'll just kind of like start from scratch and I might have to rename some of my scripts so that they're different than these uh, just because there's conflicts if you have scripts with the same name. So I'm going to go ahead in the assets folder, I'm going to right click and I'm going to create another folder here and I'm going to call it CSS, which is character selection screen. Um, you can name your folder platformer. Um, this is really just where you're going to keep all of your assets in your mini game. And I also tend to do something where I'll create a folder and I'll just call it mini games. And this is if I'm creating a, um, like, you know, like a, maybe you have a kid walking in your game that's walking around a Ferris ground. There's a bunch of mini games they can play. This is where you would have the code for the mini games. And then you can access those folders and pull those scenes together as you build your game. So in my character selection scene folder, I'm going to create another folder in here and I'm going to call this art. And I'm going to go ahead and import in it's just an image. Let me pause the video and bring up that image for a second. So this is just the PNG file. You can download this from my website or from the, the, the learning management system, but it's three characters. And notice that they just have a transparent background here, right? And that makes it easier for us to clip it out. Um, also, it looks like I forgot to erase out this little area here. So I'm just gonna do that really quick. And let's bring this down to, or bring it up rather, so it's not. Really, I just want to get a nice little wedge in there. I'm going to grab my eraser and something like this. So you just want to try to get as much of this cleaned up as possible, or that's as transparent as possible. And I have all the layers for this drawing somewhere, but for now, just to save time, it's going to kind of clean this up. So anyway, just so you understand, it's just really a transparent file with these three characters. Um, so let's save this, and I'm going to go ahead and just save this to a specific folder. And then back in Unity, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right-click in here, and I'm going to click Import New Asset, and then you can just import it in. What I'm going to do is in my Platformer folder here, because I already have that imported, I'm just going to... Uh, grab the three characters here and just move it into this folder. And um, I'm going to actually, let's, let's change this back to what you, you're probably going to see. Um, here we go. So when you first bring it in, um, you import it in, it's just going to show up as an image here, right? It could show up as default. You know, let me hit apply so you could see that. And that shows up as just like a drawing like that. So sometimes it, it acts differently depending on the, the data that comes in on that individual image. What we want to do is we want to cut this into something called a sprite sheet, which will allow us to create not only characters, but like individual images for buttons for this. So right here where it says three characters, I'm going to change it from default here to sprite 2D UI if yours isn't already there. And then you want to change this to multiple. Multiple means I'm going to cut this into multiple images. And then when you hit apply, it should register that background. I'm going to go ahead and hit Sprite Editor here. And you could see for me it automatically detected them. But what you're probably going to have to do is go to auto, leave it on automatic and hit Slice. And then what that'll do is that'll slice these up into multiple characters for you or multiple images. I'm going to hit Apply here. And what you'll notice is when you go back in here, now I have the three characters. 
Now, what I'm going to do is, here's my art folder, right? I'm going to go ahead and just name this, like, I'm going to make another folder in here and just call this concept art. And I'm going to grab these three characters and I'm going to put them in here. And then I'm going to create another folder in art and I'm just going to call this PC for playable characters. So inside of PC here, let's go ahead and just select each one of these. I'm going to hit control plus D like duck. And I'm going to uh, duplicate them outside of this folder. So here's my three characters. Now what I'm going to do is hold shift and select all. Well, let's, re let's name them. So let's name this character Sally. And then let's name this guy Joe. Come on. Or we can name this guy Theo. And then we'll name this character TJ. Okay. So I'm going to grab Sally, drop her into the scene. I'm going to do the same thing for Theo. And I'm going to do this for TJ. You might be wondering, well, why didn't you just drag all three in? Well, watch what happens when I drag it in. I'm prompted here to create a new animation. The thing behind this is if you bring in multiple images, it'll think you want to create an animation sequence like a walk cycle or something, which we'll probably do either in this game or another one where we'll have a character walking left and right and we'll have like a jump animation. Um, but we're just kind of stepping through this. So we have a Sally image, we have a Theo, and we have a TJ image. The thing behind this is um, with each one of these characters, we want them to, one, we want the pivot point. So if I go here to center or I go here to pivot, it's all in the center. We want the pivot point at the bottom so that when we're programming, it registers the jump from the bottom. You also don't want your, your art to be the primary thing when you're setting up your character. So what I tend to do is I create a game object and I just name it the name of the character here. So here's Sally. And I place it sort of at the bottom. So let's say, uh, let's just zero this out for a second. I'm going to reset the position. Then I'm going to grab all three of these and I'm going to move it up. And I'm just going to do a underscore art here and I'm going to copy that. You want to make sure that you're segmenting or you're compartmentalizing each piece of your your character. So like, for example, this is the art and I don't want to attach scripts to the art, the art part of it. And then this is the pivot. So I might do like underscore pivot. Or to be honest with you, if you just name it Sally and there's no underscore anything after it, it's a pretty good indication that um, this is the, the highest point in the hierarchy, which means the parent object. So I'm going to grab Sally art and drop it there. And now when I select this, you can see my pivot points at the bottom. Um, I also want to scale this down. I'm going to hit R to scale it down a bit. So it looks like I can make these guys 0.5. Oops. And then what I want to do here is in that PC character folder, we can create another folder in here and just call it prefabs. So we know these are all of our prefabs. And so for me, Sally is essentially done. So I'm going to drag and drop her inside of here. Um, let's go ahead and create another empty object, and then I'm going to duplicate that. And now that Sally is blue, that indicates she's a prefab. I can go ahead and delete this out of the scene. And then whenever I need Sally, I can just load her in. And it contains Sally and Sally art. We're going to actually have scripts and stuff on there, like um, for movement and things like that. All right, so this guy is Theo. So I'm going to do Theo here. Just paste that in there, and then TJ. And let's make sure these Theo and TJ um, pivot points are reset so that they go to 000 of the world. And then I'm just going to grab Theo art, drop them on there, TJ art, and drop it on there. So now when I select this, and just like before, what I'm going to do is select Theo here, do 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0 0.5, and the same for TJ, 0 0.5, 0.5. So let's grab both of these guys and just drop them in that prefabs folder. And let's delete both of these out. Now, they might be, you know, you might have to edit it later because let me just show you really quick. This is our game world here. And if I move it down here, this is how big our character is going to be in the scene and be hopping up on platformers. We are going to have a character follow it. But I tend to, I, I was a character artist. I, I mean, I still, I'm a tech artist now, but for many years, and I love to see my character, like, first and foremost on the scene. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to name this, um, here's our CSS folder. I'll make a new folder in here called Scenes. And in the Scenes folder, I'm just going to call this CSS Main Menu. 
And that's just going to differentiate it from the other main menus. Um, because we have a new, we have a main menu for our other game too. And now that we have our characters set up, that's pretty much it for this video. What we'll do in the next video is we'll actually start to create the start menu button as well as create the buttons for our characters. And then maybe in the third video, we'll script it all.